Last week's shooting in Parkland, Florida has sparked renewed demands for gun control uh, across the country. Of course, America's gun ownership rate used to be a lot higher than it is today. Yet deadly school shootings are mostly a recent phenomenon. What has changed? Could it be our overall culture has undergone a toxic shift? Matt Bevin is the governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. He recently suggested that violent video games and TV shows have created a, quote, desensitized culture. The governor joins us tonight. Governor, thanks for coming on. Great to be on with you, Tucker. So um, that is kind of the question. I mean, fewer American households own guns than did 50 years ago, and yet we didn't have school shootings. What, what do you think the difference is between then and now? Yeah, I think the thing is to ask ourselves what has changed, because your point is well taken. If gun ownership itself has not changed, and if, in fact, it's not, there are more gun restrictions now. There are more rules about who can or can't own a gun or how a gun might be acquired than there were 50 and 100 years ago. And yet 50 and 100 years ago, children did not slaughter other children at school. What right. has changed? It isn't the gun. So something culturally has changed. And I would submit that we have become significantly desensitized to death and to violence. And we are training children, whether we intend to or not, whether it's anyone's uh, desire or not, through video games, through movies, through musical lyrics, through, mo through television shows, increasingly during prime time even. The amount of violence is increasingly realistic, increasingly graphic, uh, and there is a cost to this. You couple that with the number of psychiatric drugs that children and adults, for that matter, are on and the number of warnings about depression and suicidal thoughts. You right. couple all that with the fact that our mores as a society have shifted to the degree that they're largely non-existent, that we no longer have these clear delineated right and wrong boundaries that everything is somewhat gelatinous. And these children are increasingly coming from broken homes as well. And they find themselves rudderless. And you're a father and you understand it's important. What happens at home has a profound impact on what your children do out there. Too many children don't have the blessings of having a stable environment at home. And we have to look at what has changed in society and not have a knee-jerk response that another rule and another regulation is the answer. So uh, everything you've said makes sense. I haven't seen the social science on it, but it, it doesn't sound crazy at all. It seems kind of obvious. Why, if you could just sum up quickly, why do you think saying what you just said gets such a hostile reaction from a lot of people? Why do they hate to hear that? It does not fit the narrative that people want. And for a thousand reasons, people have a preconceived notion that another gun restriction, for example, another rule, another regulation, another you can't do this, another governmental intervention of some sort is the answer. When in fact, nobody wants to look at what they have to look at if it's not that. And that is what our responsibility is in society as individuals, as parents, as teachers, as educators, as people in the churches and civic organizations and youth organizations, what are we not doing that was done a generation ago to provide the type of guidance that young people need as they grow up? And not the least of which is how you deal with differences of opinion. And I'll tell you one other thing, too, that I've not said, although I'm sure this will make people's heads explode in some regard as well. We are, we are lionizing, sadly, some of these children who do this. Yeah. Again, not anyone's intention, but we're making heroes of a child who has no business to have their face put out there. Another young person who's in the balance, right. who's perhaps psychologically unbalanced, is going to say, why not? I'll get my 15 minutes worth of fame. If I we don't think that there's a copycat mentality, we're not paying attention. That's the nature of the Internet. Governor, thank you. That was really interesting. I appreciate it. Thank you. Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman is the author of the book Assassination Generation, and he joins us tonight. Um, Colonel, thanks for coming on. So, you, you, thanks for having you've me on. Done, board, hey, you know, you just said yeah, you I haven't guess. seen the social science on it yet. Here it is. Well, well that's we why I wanted. Science. That's why AMA, I wanted to talk to you. So, yeah. so th this is the kind of uh, idea that gets dismiss dismissed as crankish immediately by people who know nothing. Um, the idea that violent well, video games and class. entertainment. Right. Well, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, so what do we know about it? What's, what is the social science well, on it? What the, is the evidence? The AMA, the APA, the American Academy of Pediatrics, Surgeon General after Surgeon General have made definitive statements. Where the matter came before the Supreme Court, California law to regulate children's access to violent video games, the video game industry found 82 journalism professors. Now think about it. 82 media studies professors who told the Supreme Court there is no scientific proof. 
it, it was academic malfeasance at the highest level. Our entire <laughs> medical community screaming from the mountainside. One of the dissenting justices in the Supreme Court case said, I, I'm not a medical expert, but I know who is. And it's not 82 journalism professors, our entire medical community, thousands of sound scholarly I'm sorry studies to laugh. telling us. That, I, I, I yes, can't imagine it's anybody over. I'd less rather take advice from than journalism professors. I can't imagine a dumber group of people. Amen. Actually. Amen. It's unbelievable. And, so and is, the, 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 the malfeasance of journalism professors making a, a joint statement to the, the, the Supreme Court. But Tucker, here's what's important. Please look at this. It was uh, 2002, an identical crime happened in Germany. 19-year-old high school dropout in Erfurt, Germany, murders 17 people at a school. Identical crime. Germany, 2002. It's not about the guns. Germany can't stop it. We saw this weekend a massacre in a church in Russia. Russia is a totalitarian nation that's tried to confiscate every gun for a century, and they can't stop evil people from getting guns. The most horrific juvenile mass murder in history, a 17-year-old kid in 2009 in Biden in Germany murdered 15 people. Germany can't stop it. Russia can't stop it. It's right. not about taking away rights. Well, it's I noticed about that. people more rights. But why yeah, are the media yeah, yeah, so hesitant to go after the big businesses that are profiting from this garbage? That's a question I'd like to it, explore it's their greater voter detail. Base and their, yeah, I know, I know. It's their donor base and their voter base. Uh, they know that they've lost their gun owners. They know that they've lost those votes. And, and to attack the gun owners, and especially to protect the, the, the video game industry, this is their donor base. Well, that's, that's exactly right. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you. I, I appreciate it, and I agree with you. Hey, one last thing, Tucker. Like, yeah. We're teaching the kids that we need sheepdogs out there. We don't need more wolves. We don't need more sheep. We need sheepdogs. I originated the whole sheepdog concept. The Sheepdog Kids book, Assassination Generation. We're changing the world, Tucker. There's hope for America, and it begins with you. Thank you for what you do. I appreciate it. Thanks.